Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be about the pattern change. I made a video today in the morning. I don't know if you saw that, but go check it out. On my channel, it was released uh, earlier in the morning. It was about the snowstorm uh, that will be bringing this pattern change uh, into the US. But, uh, you know, I just decided to make a separate video about the about the pattern change because it's so significant in itself uh, that there's so many things to talk about and just a long range forecast as well so stay tuned consider subscribing consider liking the video it really helps this channel grow and I really appreciate appreciate every subscriber every like and every comment I do get so thank you so much for that and let's get into the video so Right now we're looking at the GFS model, the GFS stands for Global Forecasting System. It's only one of the models that we look at, uh, one, only one of the models. We look at several other models, including the European, the Canadian, and a bunch of the short range, like the NAM, the HER, uh, the NAM 3KM, NAM 12KM, NAM uh, 6KM, and a bunch, uh, plenty others. So, uh, the, you know, this one is used for the long range of GFS and has been advertising a snowstorm for a very long time. And if you look at this, they're, uh, they're showing a area of snow coming down through Montana. Um, you can see that just basically uh, this snowstorm is very powerful. I mean, it'll be producing loads of heavy snow. Look at those dark colors right there by North Dakota and um, Manitoba or Saskatchewan area. Very, very heavy snow. But also notice how uh, with the system, there's very, very chilly air behind it. Look, that's the 540 line. That's kind of like the freezing line. Gets pretty far south. And this system uh, wraps itself around and almost self-destructs itself. Really, you can see uh, it weakens completely just to a few showers kind of meanders across the across the southern Canadian plains and um, by the Great Lakes area kind of uh, south of James Bay and you can see that this uh, just moves on but still leaves quite a bit of chilly air behind it so if we were to just look at the two meter temperature anomalies which basically tells us where it is above average the orange colors or where it is below average temperatures the orange or the blue colors and uh, the more you know darker or the more vibrant the blues and oranges get then that means usually the more um, contrasting the temperatures are you know like it's more significant more of bigger magnitude below or above average so then we see this uh we actually pretty warm thursday for a good chunk of the country uh or areas where they will receive the cold coming saturday and friday out ahead of the system you can see there's actually quite a bit of warm air 70s 80s down further south into central and southern illinois but for uh, but for uh northern illinois possibly uh 70s you know maybe even areas that could be seeing snow later on in the forecasting period like the arrowhead of minnesota wisconsin could be looking at 60s and 50s so very you know very uh sharp sharp temperature contrast as this thing just plows through and look at that i mean these temperature contrasts will be 20 to 25 degrees below average or just of change and which could lead to 10 to 15 degrees of below average and this kind of just sticks around you can see this the warm air gets pushed down to the south so yes some areas will be above average in the south but you know they also get their fair uh you know their fair shot of cold especially saturday and sunday and then it starts warming up but the cold kind of remains across the northern plains as uh, you know possibly the snow that falls which the models are showing some rather impressive normal um amounts uh, you know that that snow that falls may be um, producing a snowpack that is reflective of the sunlight and it lowers the temperatures and it's kind of represented right here you could see uh, it's blue below average for a good chunk of the country not necessarily just where the snow fell but the darkest the most pink shade of the below average the greatest magnitude of these uh, temperatures uh, are in the areas where the snow fell and that's because again of that reflection the white color of the snow and you can see that just maintains itself for quite a while eventually even getting into parts of the east coast which I know many of you have been wanting but then we see a warm up you can see they're advertising a kind of a brief period of warm air across the eastern US but then of course we can't get away from it the western US gets a chill Colorado Wyoming 
Utah, New uh, Kansas, Nebraska, and you can see that um, brings chill all the way down to the Gulf Coast. But then uh, later on in the forecasting period, we might get yet another one, you know, another shot of chill here. This is still very far out, but as of now, we know that a chill, a big chill is coming, you know, behind or, uh, behind a, a large storm system. So let's look at the European model. This is another um, we, a weather model that we really like. And many other people use meteorologists, weather enthusiasts, and you can see right now more of a warming pattern uh, or a warmer pattern. Not really warming; it's just uh, a, a warmer pattern out ahead of the storm. But then the system comes through. This basically tells us that uh, where the troughs and the ridges set up, and you can see that this is very close and brings the area very chilly. Or the jet stream dips into the central U.S. and it brings very chilly conditions, cold air, and with, you know, allowing for snow with that cold air for many of these locations across North Dakota and Minnesota. So that that is impressive by itself. And then you can see in long range, uh, it, it a little bit kind of dies away for a little bit still. Uh, more of that uh, negative tilt and kind of like that negative slope to that jet stream bringing that chillier into the eastern U.S. Then maybe a ridge across the central U.S. But then the further eastern U.S. could be seeing uh, some, some warmer temperatures or some cooler temperatures along with the west. So this is... We don't see this setup often if the European is onto something here, which again, it's still very far out, but usually like, the European is, uh, you know, fairly accurate since it doesn't go as far out as a GFS. But look, it shows cooler temperatures for the West would normally, which, which normally would mean, you know, cooler or warmer temperatures for the rest of the United States, but it goes up and then quickly drops down again. So we could just be looking at above average temperatures for these locations, but cool for the Northwest and cool for the Northeast. So... That is still something we'll have to see, and you know, with this we may see a coastal storm or a nor'easter, as the pattern has been very, uh, very, uh, I guess, kind of prone to these storms. I mean, if you were to look right now at the MSLP and precip uh, of the East Coast, there's a big coastal storm going on, and it, or it will be going on in the near future, and uh, I think we could see more of those, and I will be making a video about that uh, in the future. I will be addressing, you know, the, or maybe not the upcoming uh, nor'easter, but I'll be addressing the the just the the pattern that we're looking as at of at right now, and basically what I predicted months back, and why I think this could be repeating into the winter with these large storms. So uh, let's go to the now the ensembles, the GEFS. This is kind of like a summary or the average, or the mean of a bunch of models, and you can see there's that system. They're all agreeing on that sets up that cool air. Um, and then it moves off into the eastern U.S. A little bit of a warm up occurs and. The GFS models kind of want it, kind of like it to stick around for a little bit longer than uh, than the European or the other models. But you can see, uh, it's you know it's far out and it's not. It's at this point doesn't seem too great of a magnitude, but it seems uh, unlike the European to center most of its chill across the central western U.S. instead of. Uh, uh, the eastern and western U.S., which what the European was showing, you know that this is all still very far out. But uh, the main the main pattern change, the the big one, is what we're trying to focus on. And let's look at the some of the shorter range models, like the 12 km. Uh, this one, I think, yeah, it goes out to 84 hours, and I'm not sure if it encompasses this pattern change. Probably does. Okay, it does very well, and you can see uh, this is a lot a uh, short range forecast, so it should be doing a better job of showing this pattern. I think it does. I mean, you can see the colors are way more vibrant. I mean, they're showing 16 to 20 to possibly even 30 degrees below average across some of these locations. So if you live in Texas and you've been absolutely getting slammed by the heat, uh, you can see the NAM model shows uh, a nice cool down for you. And look at that temperature contrast. I mean, we go from 12 to 16 degrees above average to 12 to 16 below average. And if you add 16, plus 16 that's 32 we could easily see 30 40 degree temperature drops across these locations not let you know and not in let alone the snow could occur which would be bad enough and also first frost will be i think a uh, pretty uh, prominent if you look at some of the two meter temperature shaded now you want to see you know what these actual temperatures are going to be not just the, uh, the anomalies you could see uh, you know if we wait for this to load hopefully uh, we have, um, out ahead of this system, we have pretty warm air again, like I was saying, 50s and 60s across some areas where it will be snowing the very next day or in the next few hours from this uh, graph right here. 
on this picture. You can see the pretty chilly air, first frost even for some, uh, you know, maybe coming along with the snow. Some places may not even have seen the frost yet, but they're already seeing snow. Most areas have already seen a frost that will be seeing the snow, but it's still going to come as a surprise in early season snowstorm. And you can see right there, a 30s, you know, early frost, patchy frost as far south as Oklahoma, Arkansas, maybe northeastern, uh, north, uh, western Arkansas, and parts of Illinois, Indiana. And, let, you know, I want to emphasize that this is only 84 hours out, so this would continue into the eastern U.S., maybe not so powerfully, but still bring rather chilly temperatures for a good portion of the country. And look, this brings down 50s and upper 40s during the nights in Texas. So that, that, that that's very impressive, very impressive. So that we'd have to, you know, keep an eye on for that and see, you know, we may uh, get frost and freeze warnings all the way south, uh, you know, maybe not by Texas, but by Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. So some of these a season, you know, growing seasons may end early. In terms of the long range outlook, you can see the 8 to 14 outlook, which is from the 16th through the 22nd of 2019. So, kind of after this main big uh, Arctic blast, you can see they're showing some above below average for the west and above average for the eastern and southeastern two thirds, which is a little bit, um, it was strange that they decided to do that, but you can see with the October 14th through the 18th, uh, they have a pretty good chunk below average. And also a pretty good chunk above average, mainly by the coastal areas of the U.S. But thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. That's all I have for you today. And I'll see you on the next episode. See ya. Bye.